Welcome to an introduction to data analytics and dashboarding using Panopticon. I'm Naman Firwani, a student intern with the Global Academic Program at Alta Engineering. Data, data everywhere, not a way to see. Imagine driving a car with no speedometer, but instead you get an Excel sheet with all your speed logs. Now, does that help you? No. Is that safe? No. Well, that's what dashboards are for. They help you visualize your data in an uncomplicated, untroublesome, convenient manner. You can store and organize multiple data sources in a single, easy to access place. Now, this can help you to get a better insight into your data where you can view critical pieces of information just like you can with the dashboard in your car. You can focus on the outliers. You can add alerts and monitor risks all in real time. On the screen now, we can see the kind of dashboards we can build using the data visualization tool Panopticon. On the left side is a dashboard wherein we can monitor over 10,000 commercial vehicles all in real time. We can check on their operation fuel consumption, actual speeds, accidents, and route deviations using connected car telemetry. We can also make comparisons with historical data and compare each vehicle's performance with its peers and flag the outliers. On the right side, we can see the visualizations of telemetry data from Formula One cars. When Opticon accepts real-time telemetry data from race cars and applies a series of statistical functions on the fly and visualizes the results. Now applying analytics to racing enables faster, more accurate decisions. Panopticon offers a code-free dashboard development option for data visualizations. It has a user-friendly drag and drop interface with a universal connectivity to any data source. With such analytics, we can monitor risks, reduce operating costs, and hence increase profitability. We can use the dashboard for a lap-to-lap, -lap, car, and driver analysis. We can keep a check on the car health along with its structural and aerodynamic performance. Now, similar to a car dashboard, we can also observe the engine temperatures, tire pressures, and set control metrics. With onboard sensors and telemetry, we have a diverse set of factors we can analyze with dashboards during racing. We can combine the historical and real-time data for fault detection, set alerts to predict potential failures, say the brakes, tire pressures getting too low or temperature going too hot, and plan proactive maintenance. It also enables us to drill down the data and compare previous races, cars, different designs, laps, competitions. During developmental stage, we can process and analyze different sensor metrics from wind tunnels in real time for direct correlations, improvement, and benchmark analysis. A high frequency time series analysis can help optimize engine performance and we can extract information from multi-structural file systems, say the race results or the regulatory data in a PDF and CSV format. Now the two main problems with telemetry data and streaming are big data and fast data. The input data, be it the raw telemetry data or the sensor message, it is impossible to use it for visual analytics as it lacks dimensionality, it is too granular and high frequency in nature, and it needs aggregate measures. Thus, dashboarding helps aggregate the data, include calculated columns, rank the data, and divide it into mini batches or even combined batches of data to provide flow and accessible granularity to the data. The analytical approach taken here is the focus on anomalies, identification, investigation, backtesting, and optimization. 
These provide a platform to build better dashboards for data discovery and insights. Dynamic reporting, along with universal connectivity, helps in using the data for what it is meant for. Now, to start building dashboards, simply add your data sources. They can be Excel sheets, text data logs, or even cloud-based on Panopticon, and you're good to go. Use historical data or stream live data and drag and drop to add visualizations. Panopticon's content repository structure allows you to share your dashboards between servers and even on the cloud. Let us now check out a case study of data visualization of the Shell Ecomarathon. The Ecomarathon is a student engineering competition focused on energy optimization. It started as a wager between colleagues to see who could get the best fuel economy from road cars adapted to maximum energy efficiency, the track competition today has come a long way. The teams now can choose from an array of energy options, battery electric, conventional IC engines, and hydrogen fuel cell. They can use different materials, from advanced carbon fiber to bamboo, and optimize the vehicles for this mileage-based competition. The vehicle performance is monitored continuously using various sensors. Liquid flow meters are used to measure the fuel consumption in IC engines. Gas flow meters are used to measure the hydrogen consumption in hydrogen fuel cells. And joule meters are used to measure current, voltage, and net joule usage in battery operated components as well as the battery electric cars. GPS coordinates and other GPS derived data such as speed and distance covered by the cars are tracked also. The telemetry data is made available to the students in the specific team online folder a minimum of two hours after the end of the race or an attempt. Teams can use this data to do a post-race analysis and make improvements. The data set given by the event organizers is of the following format. We have timestamp readings from the onboard computer system as well as from the GPS. We can see coordinates in the format degree, minutes, seconds, north, for latitude and west for longitude. We can see the GPS derived data such as speed and the distance covered by the car. There are also readings provided by the joule meter and the liquid flow meter. Let's start building an interactive visualization with Panopticon. These visualizations automatically handle your aggregation, time series data, filtering, sorting, and many more. At its core, Panopticon allows you to connect to various sources of data like Excel spreadsheets, XML, CSVs, databases like KDB, Kafka, and more. Let's jump right into creating a dashboard. After logging in, this is the home page for Panopticon. The tabs up here help you manage the aspects of the Panopticon home page. We're going to use the workbooks tab right now. As you all can see, I already have a few example workbooks here. To create a new workbook, you can simply click on your workbook or right click anywhere and select new workbook. Let's rename this to car telemetry. Click create and you will be taken to the Panopticon editor. First, let's get an overview of this page. The editor is divided into three different sections. On the left is a data table, which is currently empty. On the right, we get a preview of our visualizations. And in the middle, we have a contextual menu on what we're currently doing. So the first thing any workbook needs is a data table. Let's create one by clicking on this plus button and adding a data table. You will be taken to the data importing screen. Over on the right, you can select which data source you want to use. Today, we'll be using an Excel spreadsheet. So to import one, I can click on MS Excel. I can browse for the sheet I intend to use. Let's rename this to car telemetry. Hit OK. 
fetch sheets. So our data is loaded in and we can preview it by clicking by clicking on refresh preview. We can preview our data at the bottom. If you want to rename any column, you can click on columns. All the titles of the columns are up here and simply rename that. Let's rename this to just ID. Hit OK. Refresh. Panopticon automatically identifies the data type in each column. The data types that Panopticon allows are either numeric, text, or time. Let's change the data type for the column ID. Let's change it to text. As ID is different for each row, turning it into text will help us break down the data as we can see later. Hit on refresh. We can also change the format of the time display. I'll use the hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds format for the OBC timestamp. Hit refresh. We can see the change in format. If you want to apply any transformations to the data, there are some pre-built options here, including custom Python transformation, as well as the very important transformation to enable time series analysis. Since the data that we have today is time series dependent, let's enable this. Let's unselect these and these. As the ID column is different for each set of row, this will help us break down the data. Hit refresh. Additionally, we can see that there are some settings over here that can help us change the refresh period. The refresh period is how often it goes and gets the data. We'll have a look over it later. Well, here we go. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's head back to the Panopticon editor. We're back on the editor screen. The data that we imported is on the left side of the screen. With the help of this button, we can toggle between the view and the edit menu. With Panopticon editor, we have two built-in themes, dark and light. Let's stick with the dark one. And let's create a first visual. Simply point your cursor anywhere on the screen and select to create an area. We have a variety of visualizations to choose from. As we're doing time series analysis, let's choose a line graph. We can see the format on the x-axis for time. Let's change it to the one that we need. We can customize the endpoints to the format that we need. Similarly for the tick points. Now tick points are the values that you see at the bottom of the x-axis. Let's customize these as well. Unselect this. On the y-axis, let's try to plot GPS speed. There we have it, a very first visual. We can modify this graph a little bit by giving it a title, say GPS speed. Hit OK. We can change the color of this graph. Simply drag GPSP to the color menu and select the color that we want. Let's try this. We also have an option to add a reference line. Simply click on reference line. Add a constant reference line. We can add the value that we want, say 3, hit OK. We have added a reference line. Let's change its color to bright red. We've added a reference line as well. We can create similar plots. Simply select an area on the dashboard. and select the type of visualization. Let's again try the line graph. 
we can change the format on the time axis for this one as well. This time let's try to plot the net zoom usage. We can change the color of this one to green. And in the general settings, let's give this graph a name. Hit OK. And let's enable a few of these options. They shade the area below the line and, say all, and they also show the last value, which in this case is 1412, which can prove to be quite useful. Let's try to create another visualization, a different one. Let's try to plot a group needle graph. Similarly, in this case as well, we can change the format of the time axis. And on the y axis, let's try to plot the GPS distance. This, in this case, is a cumulative GPS distance. So, selecting a certain kind of valley that is a range of different colors will help us give a better idea. We have the orange shade for smaller values while it turns green as the value increases. We can also add filter boxes here. This helps us control the time interval between which we want to view our visuals. Select an area, click control and add a time filter box. Select any column that we need, say the jewel. We'll change the format of the one that we're using. And we can add a reset filter as well. And we can toggle between these values and the graphs and the visuals will shrink and contract depending on the interval. We also have an option to view these values and these intervals. Let's try to create another visual. This time, let's try to plot the current and voltage on the same graph. Panopticon allows you to plot multiple variables on the same graph and we can toggle between them for convenience. Simply drag the current and voltage to the y-axis. And there we have our plots. Now let's try to add a digital clock at the top of this dashboard. Simply select the area. We'll use this area later to fill in with the digital clock. To add a digital clock, we have to add a new data table. Click on the plus icon and add a parameter. Let's name this parameter current time. Current time in this case is a special parameter inbuilt in Panopticon that helps display the current time. Let the data type be time. Let's change its title to clock. And let the auto refresh be one second. The value will change after every second. Let the data source be text. And let the text file source be text as well. We can add time as a column. And let's input a variable there. Current time. We can choose the format that we wish to display. Say hours, minutes and seconds. We can now scroll down and click on Generate Columns. This will generate a single column with the time variable. We can see it here, but it's in the format of days, months and years. We can change it by clicking on Columns and selecting the format that we need. Refresh Preview. With each refresh, the value of time changes. Let's save this and head back to the editor.
select the part on the dashboard, click on general, and let's add a text label. Let the text mode be data, and we'll select the time column, that's in the format that we need. Let's tweak this a little bit, change its color to white, and let's enlarge this by changing its font size. Well, there we have it. A very own digital clock at the top of our dashboard. Well, this is how we can plot variables to on a time series analysis. Well, now let us try to do some other type of visualizations that are not time dependent. Let's go back to the edit menu. Let's create a new dashboard in the same workbook and transform this data back to its original state. Let's disable the time series analysis and refresh. That is the data set that we had earlier. Let's save this and go back to the editor. Let us try to create some other type of visuals. Let's try to create a table. We can break it down with the ID. Now breakdown here helps Panopticon decide how to divide the data and helps with the hierarchy of the data. Let's try to add a few records in this table. See the GPS speed, current, voltage. We can see all the data at once. And this can help us further analyze the data. Let's minimize this. Let us use this table now to calculate a few values. Create another visualization. Select table. Now in the record section, we can add GPS speed. We can add it a few more times. Let us use the first GPS speed to see the maximum value of it in the data set that we have in hand. So the value is 9.08 meters per second. In the second one, let's try to calculate the minimum one. Minimum one is 0.83. Let us try to get a mean or average value. We have that at 6.51. We can do the same with other data types as well. Say for current, voltage, LFM instant flow. With the current, we can try to find out the maximum current value. Say for voltage, we can try to find a mean value. Similarly for the liquid flow meter sensor that is measuring the fuel flow, we can get a summation value, that is aggregate of all the sensor values, there it is. We can create other type of visualizations as well, such as bar graphs, pie charts. Let us try to plot one, select an area, select a bar graph. Let us break it down with ID and plot the GPS speed. Well, there we have it. We can create various other dashboards and make them as interactive as possible with the same data source. We can do a lap by lap comparison for GPS speeds. You can add or deselect a lap. We can see a side-by-side -side comparison of GPS speed. We have an option to select a particular lap and add filters so that we see the values of different variables along that same lap. We can also plot the coordinates and get map plots. We can select a particular lap, they'll all overlap. Panopticon helps you visualize your data and helps you get as much information that you can from them.
We did dashboarding with a static Excel sheet. With Panopticon, we have an option to stream data to simulate the racing environment. We can visualize real-time telemetry and monitor various metrics like the weather, brakes, tire pressures, suspension, fuel, throttle, and even driver analytics. We can also perform a lap-to-lap -lap comparison. We can select different sections of the track and visualize specific metrics such as the car speed at turns, driver heart rate, and many more. Or with addition of an embedded video, we can also focus on footage from a specific section of the track. Let us now try to monitor a different section of the track with another bend and see the car's performance. The race summary graphs help us to a post-mortem of the race. We can monitor analytics of different teams, drivers in different sectors and make decisions. With the help of rubber band selection, we can choose specific parts of graphs and see all visualizations related to that selected metric. Well, that's all from my side. Thank you for joining. Have a good day.